Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to talk about electric fields and Coulomb's law. So we'll get started on the ideas of electricity and be looking at that throughout this unit and try to get a better idea and an understanding of electricity and magnetism. So let's go ahead and get started. And what do we know? Well, let's start off with static electricity. And we'll look at electrical currents later. Well, static electricity has been known for thousands of years. And as an example, a piece of amber like the one shown can be used to attract bits of straw. You also get things like static cling from a dryer, which is simply static electricity, electrical charges. And you often know when you can get an electric shock by walking across a carpet on a dry day. As you shuffle across the carpet and then touch something metal, you get a little shock, which is just a discharge of electricity that was built up in your body as you moved around and then discharged onto, say, a metallic doorknob. So what are the characteristics of electricity that we want to look at? And we have something new to look at here. We've looked at things like temperatures and mass and distances and times. But we have a new thing to look at here that we have not talked about in our previous lessons. And that is electric charge. An electric charge comes in two types. It can have positive or negative values. And we find that like charges repel. So if they are the same, if they are both positive or both negative, they push each other apart. If they are unlike, so positive and negative charges will attract each other. And we will see that the force between these two charges decreases with the distance between them. Now you may that may sound familiar. We talked about the force of gravity and how it decreases with the distance between two objects and the force between two electrical charges is similar. However, the difference is is that gravitation is always an attractive force. Masses always attract each other. There is no type of material that repels gravitation gravitationally in the same way that things repel elect and electric forces. So let's continue on here. Let's look at what we mean by electric charge. And we said that there were positive and negative charges. And one way to do this is to take an example of a glass rod pictured here and rub that with a piece of silk. And what that will do is that the glass will become positively charged and the silk will become negatively charged. So electrons are being transferred from the rod into the silk. And if you did this with two rods and tried to push those two rods together, they would repel away from each other. You would feel a, you would see one move away and you would feel a force in the other one trying to move them away. And you could do the same thing with two pieces of silk that have been handled this way, that they will repel each other because they both have the same charge. The glass rods are both positively charged and the pieces of silk are both negatively charged. But what can we understand about charges? Where do they come from? How small can they be? And can they be created or destroyed? Or is charge conserved much like um, mass and energy and other things that we've talked about so far? So let's try to look at some of these things to get a better understanding of electrical charge. And in order to do this, we have to go to an atomic model and look at a model of the atom. In the atom, we have a nucleus down at the center, which is positively charged. And we have electrons that orbit around that. So the electrons orbit around. And you see several electrons in this atom here pictured. And the charges of the electron and the proton are equal in magnitude. So the protons down here have a positive charge. The electrons orbiting have a negative charge. And those two charges are exactly the same. So if you had three positive charges in the nucleus and three negative charges in the electrons orbiting it, you would then have a neutral atom. And that amount of charge is actually given by the the charge here is given by QE, that's the charge of the electron, 
is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs, where the uh, coulomb is the SI unit of charge. So in order to get one coulomb is a very large amount of char larger amount of charge in that it takes 6.25 times 10 to the 18th protons or electrons to get one coulomb worth of charge. And this is the smallest unit of charge is the charge here, the charge of the electron. So let's go ahead and look at what else we have here. And we have conservation of charge. So is charge conserved? And we find that charges can be moved around and changed. So electrons can move, but they are neither created nor destroyed. So the total charge in any process is going to be a constant. And we'll see some of that when we come to chemistry in the second part of this class. So example, we can take a particle accelerator that where we can create mass from energy. So large amounts of energy can then create mass. And they are created not as individual particles. You do not just create an electron. So you can't just create an electron because the charge would not be conserved. Remember that mass and mass and energy are really just different forms of the same thing. So mass can be converted to energy and energy can be converted to mass. However, in order to do this, we have to create particle and antiparticle pair, pairs. So if we create an electron, we also have to create a positron. And antimatter positron is exactly the same as an electron, except it has a positive charge. And you can create those pairs. And now you have one positive charge and one negative charge. So you would have a no net charge created. You started out with no charge before from the energy. And you have no charge afterwards, no net charge afterwards, because you created a positive and a negative charge. And we can see that in our diagram here as to what's happening within the collider. You have a extreme amount of energy that can then produce uh, produce electro produce particles. And that would be done by using Einstein's equation. And we remember that as E equals M C squared. But we also have that as the where if we convert it, we say that the change in mass twice the mass of the electron is equal to E divided by C squared. So charge before is zero char net charge total charge after is zero. And very quickly that electron and anti electron or positron will collide together to produce energy again. So electron anti electrons will not stick around very long because there are so many electrons around. Now this is an absolute conservation law. Charge is one of those physical quantities that is always conserved. So that just like things like mass, we talked about mass and energy, then charge is one of those things that is always conserved. So let's look a little more about electricity as we move along here and talk about what we mean by conductors and insulators. So we see an example of a wire here. And the wire is shrouded by an insulator. So that is things like the rubber and plastic coatings. And they do not allow the electrons to flow easily. So while electricity can travel through the copper wires on the inside and travel very freely, it does not travel very well through the coating. And that keeps allows to keep the wires separated. So the wire electrons do not transfer between the two wires here or the three wires, I should say, and does, it keeps them separated. So metals like copper, as we see in a wire here, are an example of a con conductor that allows the electrons to flow. Things like the plastics or rubber are very good insulators that do not allow electrons to flow easily. Now, 
In order to understand this, we do have a, a law to under to get, which is Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law will tell us that there is a force between any two charges, just like the gravitational force. So gravitational is a force be, force is a force between any two masses. The Coulomb's law gives us the electrostatic force between any two charges, anything with either positive or negative charges. Now the difference is that the electrostatic force is different in that it can be attractive like gravity, but it can also be repulsive. It can also push things apart and we will find and see in our example that it is much, much, much stronger than the gravitational force. So the force is given by, uh, if we look at two example force charges here, Q1 and Q2 separated by a distance R that the force is given by a constant K times Q1 times Q2 and the two bars mean we're taking the absolute value. So if they're uh, we're looking at the absolute value of those charges, the product of them. Is that that gives us the force and it looks it should look very similar to what you may remember as G M1 m2 over r squared. If you recall that from gravity, it looks very, very similar to this. k is the constant for electrostatic force, just as g was the constant for gravitational force. And it is a much bigger value, 8.99 times 10 to the 9th Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. So we can go ahead and uh, look at an example that involves using this. So let's look at an example here and let's compare the electrostatic force between two objects, between an electron and a proton, so opposite charges, meaning that they're going to attract, separated by 0.53 times 10 to the negative 10th meters with the same gravitational force between those same two objects. So what do we need? Well, we need the distance that will be the same for both the electrostatic force and the gravitational force. For the electrostatic force, we need the charge. Remember that the charge is the same, just opposite in sign for both of these. And for the um, gravitational force, we need the masses, the mass of the electron and the mass of the proton. So we have all of those values, then we can go ahead and calculate First, let's do the electrostatic force. So we have the equation that we gave previously, K times Q1, Q2 over R squared. And we can put our numbers in that we have and find out that the force between those two is 8.19 times 10 to the negative 8 newtons. So looks like a very small number, uh, a very low amount of force between these two. But the idea here is to compare it to gravity. Now if we do the same thing for gravity, remembering Newton's law of gravitation, so the force of gravity is g m e m p over r squared. And if we put our values in, we then find when we calculate that, that the force of gravitation between the proton and the electron is 3.61 times 10 to the negative 47th. So here we had 10 to the negative 8th. Here we had 10 to the negative 47th. That is 39 factors of 10. So 39 tens in there. 10 times 10 times 10. 39 times in order to get the difference in the force. So the if we actually take the ratio here and divide the force electrostatic force by the gravitational force for these objects, we find that it is 2 times 10 to the 39th times greater. So the electrostatic force is much, much stronger than the a gravitational force. And you can see this very easily. If you take a plastic comb and rub it in your hair, you could actually pick up a small piece of paper against gravity. So even though the entire Earth is pulling down on that piece of paper, the electrostatic force is so many times stronger, you could easily pick that up. Now, the other thing we want to look at in this section is electrical potential energy. And this will come back in the rest of this unit when we talk about electric potential. So when we accelerate an electrical charge, 
we give it kinetic energy. So remember that kinetic energy one half mv squared, we can accelerate that. Well, because we're accelerating the electrical charge, that means the potential energy and the kinetic energy are the same. So work is negative the change in potential energy. And we will come up with the electric potential energy, which we often call voltage. So the voltage difference between two area two two areas two plates here, positive and negative, would be given by that potential energy divided by a charge. So it would be the units would be volts and one volt for the SI unit is one joule per coulomb. So we will be using voltage a lot more when we start looking at things like electrical circuits and other electrical calculations that we will be doing throughout this unit. So let's go ahead and finish up with our summary. And what we find we started out talking about static electricity, which was fixed charges charges that did not move. And we learned that the charges could either be positive or negative. And that like charges will attract each other or repel each other and opposite charges will attract. Electrical charge is a conserved quantity so you can never create or destroy electrical charge. The total electric charge before anything has to be the same as the electrical charge afterward. And we were looked and worked at an example with Coulomb's law, which gives the magnitude of the electrostatic force between any two charges. And we saw how much stronger that was than the gravitational force. So that concludes this lecture on electric fields and Coulomb's law. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day, everyone. And I will see you in class.